Yo, what is up, my friends? Thank you all for joining me today. Today, man, I'm doing great. Hope you all are doing amazing. Today, I got a pretty juicy video for you all. Today, I'm going to be going over what the great philosopher Plato said in his book, The Timaeus, about our seed and why it should be retained. Now, the translation that I'm using is this one right here, just titled Plato's Cosmology. The Timaeus of Plato translated with a running commentary, and I decided to go with this book right here because it seemed like it was a very unbiased translation uh, just by reading the comments or the reviews of the book, and people were saying it got a little more in-depth and it was a little bit of a heavier read than some of the other translations and commentaries, which is sort of what I was looking for. But I'm not that far into this book currently, but I was looking through the table of contents and something stuck out to me. I saw a little section where Plato was talking about the marrow, the brain, and the seed. So when I saw this, it just stuck out like a sore thumb. I'm like, okay, I have to go ahead and read ahead. So I'm going to start off and start to read the commentary right before Plato's actual words. But before I get into this, make sure y'all drop a like and subscribe. Show some love. So man, I'll get right into it. In the next paragraph, which tells us that the seed is the physical vehicle for the transmission of life, belonging to a different system of organs. The seed is a part of the marrow, which extends from the head, where it forms the brain. Throughout the whole length of the spine, the marrow is the fundamental substance. In it are fastened the very bonds of life, the roots of every part of the soul. Moreover, a portion of it, the brain, is the seat of the immortal element in the soul. The seed is the means by which the living creature attains to such immortality as the mortal can have by perpetuating its race in generation. Sexual desire, as Diotama explains in the Symposium, is the lowest form of the passion for immortality. At a higher level, the same energy finds an object in fame after death, for which men will sacrifice life itself, and higher still eros becomes the passion for wisdom philosophy, whereby the soul may regain the pristine purity of its divine nature. And if you don't know what eros means, pretty much an ancient Greek term referring to sensual or passionate love. In contrast with modern doctrines of sublimation, Plato regards the highest form of desire as primitive and essential. The lower forms exist only at levels to which the soul is fated to sink when incarnate in a mortal body. The whole doctrine is briefly resumed, therefore any mention is made of the organs of sex and of the channel provided for the seed. Regarded in this light as the passion for immortality in all its forms, Eros could not be treated as merely an element in the appetitive part. Its physical medium, the seed, does not belong to the sexual organs, which merely provide an outlet and a receptacle, as actually a part of the marrow. It is continuous with the brain, the seat of the mortal and divine part. Now, the marrow, seed, and brain. Starting from the marrow, we are now to have a more systematic description of the human frame. The skeleton is a bony shield protecting the marrow and itself protected by the flesh and skin. Thus, the whole body is regarded as a vessel with successive layers, guarding at its core the substance in which the bonds of life are secured. So this is what Plato actually has to say in the Timaeus, the actual translated portion. With bone, flesh, and all substances of that sort, the case stands thus. The starting point for all these was the formation of the marrow, for the bonds of life, so long as the soul is bound up with the body, were made fast in it as the roots of the mortal creature. While the marrow itself is formed of other things, the god set apart from their several kinds those triangles which, being unwarped and smooth, were originally able to produce fire, water, air, and earth of the most exact form. Mixing these in due proportion to one another, he made out them the marrow, contriving thus a mixture of seeds of every sort for every mortal kind. Next, he implanted and made 
fast therein the several kinds of souls. Also from the first, in his original distribution, he divided the marrow into shapes corresponding in number and fashion to those which the several kinds were destined to wear. And he molded into spherical shape the plowland as it were, that was to contain the divine seed. And this part of the marrow he named the brain, signifying that when each living creature was completed, the vessel containing this should be the head. That part on the other hand, which was to retain the remaining mortal kind of soul he divided into shapes, at once round and elongated, naming them all marrow from these as if from anchors. He put forth bonds to fasten all the soul, and now began to fashion our whole body round this thing, first framing round the whole of it a shield of bone. Now back to commentary by the translator. The sentence describing the formation of the marrow is of doubtful meaning. Taylor translates, which is another translator, thus he devised a universal seed for all mortality, fashioning the marrow from these. Next he implanted the variety of souls in it and bound them fast there. Also in the first original distribution he divided the marrow itself into shapes answering in number and quality to the several varieties. On this interpretation, the whole sentence refers only to the human soul and marrow, but certain phrases are difficult to understand unless we adopt the view suggested in Rivad's translation that the marrow contains seeds of all sorts for every mortal kind, the roots of the kinds of souls of beasts as well as man, and a performance detrimentation of the various shapes, types of bodies which the souls of all those species were destined to wear. And skipping forward a bit to the next paragraph where he talks about the actual seed. The doctrine that the seed comes from the brain and the marrow of the spine was held by the Sicilian school of medicine. Alchemion of Croton is said to have called the seed a part of the brain, and Hippo of Regime to have taught that it flows from the marrow. The two views are combined by Diocles and Plato. The Hippocratian school, on the contrary, believed that the seed came from all parts of the body. So that is some pretty interesting stuff. Plato pretty much claims that your seed is the key to immortality, no matter which way you use it, whether to pro procreate and create more generations of yourself, or to use it for a more higher purpose. And at the same time, he makes the connection to the marrow and to the brain, which I find very interesting because through many different beliefs, there is that connection as well. You have the Hindu belief in one of the ancient Sanskrit texts, I forgot which one exactly, but it's like a medicinal one where they talk about the process of how food is actually transferred into semen. It goes through like a seven stage process. Your food gets uh, transferred into a child, which is a fluid, and from the fluid into your blood, and that blood into the flesh, the flesh into the fat, the fat into the bone, the bone into the marrow, and from the marrow, we get the seed. So those are two beliefs that support each other. We also have the sacred secretion of that belief as well, that your Christ oil, your sperm, your semen will once developed, we'll travel back up the vertebrae, back into your brain, into the hypothalamus, and then to the pineal and pituitary glands. So there are a lot of different belief systems, a lot of different theories, and alternative science, I will call it, showing you the connection between your seed and your brain and your soul, how divine it truly is, and how it is not just Part of your reproductive system, but your reproductive system is more so a conduit that expels your seed when you want to reproduce. So this is all very interesting stuff, man. Hope you guys enjoyed reading or listening to what Plato had to say about semen retention, as I say, and as he says, your seed is divine and it is not to be used sparingly. But anyways, guys, that is the video for today. Any questions whatsoever, drop them down below and I will answer them. Like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And as always, guys, you will have a great day.